Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Dave Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author of the book Redefining Anxiety, is my co-host today as we talk to you about your life and your money. So you've got questions about uh, the people you're going to see this week known as crazy relatives. John's here. He's got a degree in counseling. He cannot help you. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what I'm doing. That's all. Man. Oh, wait a minute. You just called your relatives crazy. Be careful there. This is a broadcast. You know what? By this time, we all know those cats are out of the barn. They okay. are what they are. All right. Cats are out of the barn. Okay. All right. Good. I didn't know you kept cats in a barn in Texas. I don't know what's in the barn in Texas. Okay, all right. Just <laughs> right. checking. Just checking. The horse is out of the barn. Who, who comes out of the barn? Cattle, usually, but uh, what do I know? All right, open phones at 888-825-5225. Uh, let's move on from the farm animal anthology here, <laughs> and we will talk to you about your life and your money. Diana is going to start us off in San Bernardino, California. Merry Christmas, Diana. Merry Christmas, Dave. Hi, Dr. D. How are you guys today? Great. How can we help? Good. Well, I was calling. Oh, I might get emotional. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a widow. Mm. Um, my husband died a year and a half ago. Mm. And my kids um, get a Social Security survivor benefit. Mm-hmm. It's $900 each a mm-hmm. month mm-hmm. until they're 18. Mm-hmm. My son is um, 10. And my daughter is 8. Mm-hmm. And I just want to know how to be the best steward of that money for them. I, I myself, um, I'm a teacher. i um, thankfully, through COVID and all of this, I still work. Um, I make $92,000 a year. Um, and I myself am on Baby Step 2. I'm trying to kick Sally Mae to the curb. Good, um, good. But I live on what I make, and I don't use that, that money for anything else. And mm-hmm. I just want to know what to do with it for them. Okay. Wow, what a hard time you've been through. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well... My my opinion on this is very strong, like most of my opinions. Um, you mm-hmm. spend way more than nine hundred dollars per child per month to take care of those children. Mm-hmm. It takes more than that to buy food, lights, water, clothing, and so on for an individual in San mm-hmm. Bernardino, California. And so, yeah. if I were you, I would simply take that eighteen hundred dollars a month and make it part of your budget. And your budget should take care of your family first, food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and utilities. And then it should start Mm -hmm. working on the future, working your baby steps. And you would save for kids' college, and you would save for retirement, and you'd work to pay off your home. And this is all after you clear Sally Mae to the curb. But clearing Sally Mae to the curb is a gift to your children because it puts you in a position then to send them to school, and you save for that. There is no yeah. law, nor any ethic, no, nor any moral obligation for you to set this $1,800 aside somewhere while you on the left side, uh, to, uh, set it over to the right while you on the left are starving to death. You're not starving mm-hmm. at 92000 but you're not like filthy rich or something either. Right, <laughs> right. So your budget is tight enough, and I just put the 1800 bucks in there. Same thing with child support. You're not obligated okay. to set child support aside for children because you spend more You single parents out there, you spend more on that kid than the child support is. In every state in America, you spend more on that kid than the child support is. So it's not like you're getting rich off of child support, any of you out there that are living on this. So just mix it in as part of your budget. So I just want to give you the freedom to do that because you got enough things on your plate without being shamed or guilted about this $1,800. And and Diana, sometimes when... When we're dealing with grief, and it looks like you're about six months into trying to reconfigure what your head and heart and world is going to look like for those two little kids, and then COVID mm-hmm. hit, and you've had to navigate this by yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> there's this there's this mythological notion that if you just follow these steps in the right order and do the right things, that it will make the passing of someone that you love okay. 
And right. Dave is right. There is no magical use for this money. You'd give every penny of okay. it back to have this guy back sitting at your kitchen table. You know that. We know that. Mm-hmm. And then we also have to recognize that's not going to happen. And so the next right thing right. to do is to work hard and diligently and intentionally on dealing with the loss of your husband. It's going to take years and years mm-hmm. and minute and some minutes. Love those kids. And like mm-hmm. you said, man, use this money as though it is part of your income and rock on and go from there. Because it is part of your income. That's right. Okay. That's what it's designed okay. for. There, if, if the um, if the law was that it had to be set aside for children, they would force you to set it aside for children. It doesn't. It comes to you to take care of your children. And the assumption in the law is accurate, is that a mom is going to take care of her kids. Right. And um, very few times does that assumption not play out. Um I, and we would call those bad parents, you know, and you said which it is a whole different issue. Getting out of debt, letting that that pressure off of you, like taking that weight off of you, that's a gift to your kids, right? Use that well, money. Get out of debt. And mathematically, it sets her up to be able to care for them in right. the next stages as well. That's right. And so this idea that somehow people have it in their head that it needs to be separated off or whatever and... It's part of that magical grieving and that magical thinking there. Yeah, and, you know, another situation where the exact same question, the exact same answer comes up is uh, someone gets divorced, and they get, they're getting child support, and then they get remarried. Uh, and so now they've got a household income that concerns step-parent, step-father, step-mother, and then you're getting child support on the other side, right. and you got an income from the other. Is it okay to mix that in? Yeah, it's absolutely mixed in because that step-parent is freaking writing checks taking care of these kids. That's right. That's part of the deal. And they're they're paying for that roof over the head. They're paying for that electricity. Uh, they're paying for that water bill when that kid flushes that commode sixty three thousand times. <laughs> you know, and sticks the rabbit, the stuffed rabbit, in there, and it leaks for twenty four hours. Or All Dave, of that, right? Or they never flush. It's that one too. Oh, what? Well, yeah, see, you had to go there. I'm just. I was trying you. to run up a bill. You just got gross. Okay. I, <laughs> no, man. Hey, I'm living it. I'm living it. Oh, I wish they were flushing sixty three times a day. <laughs> oh man you'd gladly pay the water bill. Uh, no but <laughs> yes but yes but yes well you're out in the country you're on a well aren't you yes oh, i'm on see, a well there you go doesn't cost much all right so where the cats are in the barn where the there. cats yeah. are in the barn <laughs> in these uh tennessee barns right <laughs> for the record for the record america i have a cat that's living in the barn no and you're a cat guy? No, they just no, you're show a, up. You're a barn cat I'm guy. I'm a dog guy. Okay, you're a barn cat guy. Right. Cats belong in the barn. And I'm the husband of a, I mean, the father of a son and a little girl, and they saw this barn cat, and yep. such it is. Such as it is. And so the tragedy begins. So the tragedy has begun. Their dad it's is all, tough and It's rumble. all unraveled. The Grinch is my co-host this hour. Very few principles. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Dr. John Deloney, two PhDs and can't figure out what to do with a barn cat. (laughs) We'll be back on the Dave Ramsey Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. CHM is not health insurance, but it is Christians helping other Christians by sharing each other's medical bills. The medical bill sharing from CHM was exactly the way the website described it. There were no surprises, no bait and switch, no hidden agenda. CHM did everything they said they would by sharing all of our eligible needs. We like that it's a nonprofit ministry and that we were being better stewards of our money, all while helping other families. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. That's chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. Dr. 
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, uh, writer of the best-selling book, Redefining Anxiety, what it is, what it is not, and how to get your life back. If you want to talk about that type of thing and talk about your life and maybe boundary issues or whatever else is going on in your family, he's here today with me, and we'll certainly take your questions about life and money. The phone number, 888-825-5225. Mo is next in Belgium. Hey, Mo, how are you? Hey, Dave. Hey, John. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Good. How can we help? Uh, it's, a, it's a money-based question, so sorry, John. The emotional things are not necessary with me. Uh, so the question that I have is actually about, I started a business a year ago, and uh, it's it's been doing okay with, uh, with the cash flow, but uh, I'm just asking about what is the best way to invest my money like and what should i do just pay myself out and do something with that or keep it in the business and invest in something else you know well i i I, you know there's three things that i invest in i put money back into my business i put money in mutual funds and i put money in real estate I do not know the real estate landscape in Belgium well enough to tell you if that's a good investment or not. You probably could tell me and, uh, yeah, and, uh, and what types of vehicles you've got that are similar to mutual funds that you can get into. Yeah, yes. So uh, I actually uh, I don't know much about investing or anything. I actually know a lot about housing, and uh, I really think housing is a, a good investment in, in Belgium. Okay. All right. But uh, I'm just uh, just thinking about what should I keep the money uh, in the business and buy buy houses from the business or put it on my uh, personal accounts and uh, pay the taxes on that and then buy the houses. Again, I don't know the tax implications there, but if all things are equal, I would have them separate from your business because you wouldn't want your business to appear to be so wealthy that it became a target for lawsuits. And so I don't own any real estate inside my Ramsey Solutions business. Ramsey Solutions is actually a tenant of mine uh, on another on another company that owns the building. And so, um, you know, you've, your structure that way is typically good risk management to not have all your investments in one entity. Um, and that would include, you know, separating your business from your real estate. Um, and even with real estate, once it gets to a certain size, I would have a different entity. In the States, we use an entity called the, an LLC for real estate. And I don't get but about 5 to $10 million worth of real estate into a, an LLC, and then I open another one. Because I don't want, if someone sued us that got hurt on a property or something, and we lost everything in that LLC, that would be all there is that they would get. It's limited to whatever that holds. And then the other buckets... The other LLCs are safe. They're protected from that. And so, um, you know, that, that's just risk management once you get a, to a certain level of wealth that you spread around the target so that it's a, a series of smaller targets, not a super large singular target. And so that's why I would not put it in the business. Again, I am not familiar with structuring stuff in Belgium, though. I, I would be known as clueless. But conceptually, you want to spread that risk around. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jeff's in Phoenix. Hi, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing well, Dave. How are you? Great. How can we help? Okay. Just wanted to get some feedback from you. The situation is um, my daughter uh, finishes, finished her bachelor's degree back in the May. She's been accepted into a graduate occupational therapy program um, I've talked to the finance people there and run through the numbers, done some financial modeling. And it looks like um, after, if you consider um, the loan she would take, and I would pay for the plus loans, but she would pay have to take on the direct loans, the program is about three years long. The numbers show that uh, given those factors and the interest on those loans when she graduates, and she would graduate – with about 88,000 of student lo- loan debt. So the, uh, the fly in the ointment is she has a pretty good job right now. So she's considered deferring for a year. Um, on this job, um, we conser- conservatively estimate that she should be able to make about 60 to 70,000 a year. Yep. And um, 
so we think uh, after taxes and expenses, if she lived conservatively, she could have about forty to forty five thousand um, saved to apply toward the debt, not have to go in as much debt if she deferred a year. What's your what question? Your input on what your thoughts are. Should she just go ahead and start the program and buy the, the bullets or wait and, and use this chunk of money to pay for the program so she doesn't have to go into debt so much? Absolutely, under no circumstances do you borrow money at all, any a penny of it for an OT program, period. So the magic about an OT program is they make you feel like you were – like. You know what? We scoured earth and you're the one. We accepted you. And the reality is there is a ton of empty seats in a number of these graduate programs across the country. And the tide has turned in many, many, many academic programs where there's more seats than there are students. Which, what does that mean? That means next year. That means the year after. After she works her butt off for two years and decides this is really, really what I want to do, then she's saved up 80 grand and she can go write a check and it's going to be a painful check. And she's going to pay cash for that job and then she's going to walk out. And as an OT, Dave, you may have seen different numbers, but we're talking 65 to 80,000 bucks a year being an OT, depending on where you're doing the work. And so if she's doing it to make more money or to quote unquote move up, she's already got a pretty good job. And so I'd really dig in as to why she wants to do that, but under no circumstances do you borrow money. Jeff, just to give you a little context, John has a Ph.D. in higher ed and has served on served in universities all over America uh, late, lately as dean of students. So this is not something he just made up. Uh, he's lived this for decades. Uh, my opinion is the same thing. OT is treated like your medical student or something like you uh, were given a gift from heaven to be let in, and that's a bunch of hogwash. Uh, OT is not med school. And it shouldn't cost like med school, and some of them try to charge for it like it's med school. We know it's not med school because you make 60 to 80 coming out, not 160 to 180 coming out. That's how we know it's not right. med school. And so uh, I think it's overrated. Uh, I'm not sure that's what she wants to do. I think she just got in this track and then got accepted and felt approval from being accepted. And I'm trying to, John's trying to truncate that, and so am I. So definitely work a year. Uh, the other thing I would try to do is I'd try to work a year or two in the freaking field so she can get in there and get her hands in the middle of our occupational therapy and figure out if it's what she really wants to do. Oh, by the way, the company she's working for may pay her tuition after that to go up and finish her master's and go ahead and get the degree. Free, I'd yeah. be okay with. Going in student loan debt for anything is a bad idea. I really would beg you not to go into student loan debt, you or her, for this. Right. Of any amount, not $2 worth. Uh, oh, and by the way, there's a vast array of charges depending on which school you get approved for. That's right. There's books and fees and hospital no, no, charges. Well, yeah, and well, no, what I'm saying is, is that school A may be double oh, what school B is. Saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. School B may be half of this. And again, this idea that, oh, wow, that's the one I got accepted in. They, they picked me. They picked me, and I'm special right. and bull crap. Right. You know, this you are shopping for the cheapest eggs, man. And get you just done. get the you go to store to store and get the cheapest eggs. Is their eggs, and because no one ever walks into an occupational therapy's office and goes, I you know I see you went to that school. I don't think I'll come. Right, I'm out. Hey, right. No one even asks where you went to school. They're not even positive you did go to school. <laughs> I now I'm a nerd, and I had both of my knees done two summers ago, and my occupational therapist was incredible. And I did ask, hey, where'd you go to school? After. But, uh, after. Oh, I wasn't going to walk out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you couldn't. Your knees are messed up. Well, that's up, right. That's right. Well, she had me strapped out, to the table anyway. But yeah, I want my OT to be awesome. But I, I yeah, also don't want them to be A bunch of dead, lawyers man. in my life, a bunch of docs, and I've never asked one where they went to school. <sighs> never. Never. Because I'm just not impressed with your pedigree. All I want to know is can you fix what's broken? That's all I want to know. And so this idea you pay double because you went to that school, it's laughable. It's just laughable. Don't do it. So, yeah, we'll take, a, take a year off, preferably working in the field, and then get free tuition. This is my best course of action on this. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. 
Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help get you there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today here on the air. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Cliff and Ryan are with us in Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, Dave. How are you? Very cool. I see on my screen you're debt-free. Congratulations. Thank you. Love it. How much have you paid off? $71,135. $71,135. Love it. How long did this take? Don't want to forget the 52 cents. That's right. Get the 52 cents in there. (laughs) It came out of the corner of the couch, right? So uh, how long did this take? (laughs) Uh, Just under two years, so right right around 23 months. Okay, very good. And your range of income during that time? Uh, 113 to 117. Okay, cool. What do you all do for a living? We both work in... Television broadcast production, actually. Oh, very cool. <laughs> I work in professional sports, and Cliff works in television. Okay. Lo- in the yeah. lo- local affiliate there. Yes. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very cool. What kind of debt was the 71000 Well, it was a range. We had cards and cards and cards. Uh, <laughs> four credit cards, uh, store credit cards, uh, credit union credit cards, uh, our, both of our school loans, uh, and then... Uh, uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle loan, and then a uh, home improvement loan. What was the big one? Those pesky student loans. Uh, I think they were the biggest. Student loans are gigantic. Okay, old pesky Sally May had to go. Yeah. How long you guys been she married? Had to get <laughs> Sally. How long you guys been married? We've been married just over eleven years. Okay. But we've been together about seventeen. So what happened two years ago that set you guys on fire? What's the story to this journey? So a lot of my family had been mentioning your name at various holidays and I always brushed you off and you know, I thought we were good with our money, we had good debt, you know, like everybody says, you're you have you should have good debt and then fast forward a couple months and my best friend Whitney came over and she pulls out these white envelopes and I was like what are those? You know, we were just pr- trying to pay for some pizza. And she's like, oh, these are my cash envelopes. I'm following this Dave Ramsey plan. And I'm like, wait a minute. My family talks about this guy. Like, who is he? You know, and then I brushed it off again. And fast forward to July of 2018. And I just couldn't get you out of my head, Dave. And so I Googled you. And um, you happen to be running a Christmas in July special. And lucky for me, I was able to get the bundle of the Total Money Makeover, Rachel book, Live Your Life, Not Theirs, and then a kid's financial piece set for our son, and we created our first budget that day on every dollar. I read the total money makeover in two days flat, and we immediately performed plastic surgery on all our credit cards, became mega gazelle intense, and literally the rest was history. Cliff, how did you keep up? Because once she stepped on the gas, she went. (laughs) Yeah, so... A little whiplash. uh, Enjoy the ride. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good oh so you know at what point did you join into this process um well like she said we were together um o- over at her friend's house um and like she said the family talked about it all the time and and you know we're like we get in the car drive it, drive it home and we're like what are they even talking about? Like, what, what is this thing? What is this thing? You know, and you get more and more interested. And then next thing you know, you're reading books and paying off debt. Okay. So you were in there right from the start with her then. Oh, for sure. Right from okay. The start. All right. Very good. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, you guys. We're so proud of Thank y'all. Thank you. So it's as so a part, peaceful. It's fantastic. It's as a a part of this journey, Cliff and Ryan, what happened to your marriage? I'm always fascinated by these joint journeys people go on and mm-hmm. what happens to their marriage. 
I mean, it definitely strengthened it. And how, how so? The, the communication, especially, because I do think that's one of the main keys of getting out of debt and being on this journey is just clear, open, constant communication. I mean, just the way that it you have to have that between the two of you. And then I think um, dreaming together for what the future holds for us now that we are on our way to financial freedom and dreaming yeah, together alone and then for our family. You say, say that again, Claire? We talk about retirement all the time now. It's a real thing. Mm -hmm. ah. It's not, it's not a boogeyman in the closet waiting to pounce later. It's, re it's something you're going to make happen. <laughs> it's within reach, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, guys. Very, very proud Thank of you. So Thank this you. is 23 really tough months, $35,000 a year, about $3,000 a month average that you paid off during this time. Mm -hmm. What was the toughest part of this? Uh, I would say saying no <laughs> and realizing that was a complete sentence, um, especially to our son. He was at, he was, you know, eight and nine years old and having to say no to him a lot for certain things that now he throws back in our face, which is hilarious. You know, you said no to me all these times. Now let's order as much pizza as we want. <laughs> so I would say saying no to him was definitely hard. And then the last big debt of our snowball because we weren't getting those small victories that you get at the beginning to mm -hmm. like keep the motivation going. Mm -hmm. So I had to create some sort of reward or treat for ourselves for every thousand dollars that we ended up knocking off of mm -hmm. that last debt. So those, those are the two hardest parts, I think. Very cool. Yeah. You know what? Look, look, saying no to certain sports um, for kids, and, and for parents, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult. But when you know it's going to be a short-term decision, um, it makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So I know there's families all over the country that listen to this and, and tell themselves, I've got two little kids. We just can't, get, we can't do that right now. This isn't the right season. So you're living proof. You've got two beautiful little kids. I'm looking here on the monitor. Your kids survived, right? They made it? Yep. Yeah. And everybody's Absolutely. okay and safe and fed and all that. Yep. And they're stronger on the other end. Yeah, they're not. They're not they don't they, have to go into counseling have, for missing a pizza. <laughs> right. 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 Or instead they of. They have an understanding of the sacrifices that we were having to take on mm -hmm. in order to put ourselves in better success financially for the future. Yeah. Way to go, you guys. I love it. So today, it, it, it is, now is the right time. Today is the right time mm -hmm. to get started. Yeah, Hogan says some days not on the calendar. All right. It's always too late to wait. It's never too late to start. Yeah. Never, never too late to get a great head start on something. Well done, you Thank guys. You. Well done. Thank you. We're so proud of you. You're mm -hmm. heroes. You took control of your life, changed your family tree. You absolutely rocked this. Well done. We got a copy of Chris Hogan's book for you, Everyday Millionaires. We definitely want that to be the next chapter in your story. You truly have lived like no one else, and now you're going to be in a position to live and give like no one else, including all the pizza you want. <laughs> $71,000 paid off in 23 months, making 113 to 117. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. A, B, C, D, we're debt free. <laughs> This is how it's done. Oh, fabulously done. Man. What she said um, about the impact on marriage is essential. Right. We take calls virtually every hour on this show about, well, can I do this without my spouse? I don't get my spouse involved. My spouse, my spouse, my spouse. And on top of that, you know, we've got... Seven million people have been through Financial Peace University now, so we actually know what we're talking about when it comes to it's almost impossible to do this against the will of your spouse. Right. And mm -hmm. not only that, when you do it on the other side with your spouse, you find yourself closer. Sweeter. Yeah. Communication's increased. Unity has increased. Unified vision that you created together. Yeah. Is, we're we're is truly there. walking out this, as the preacher said, and now you are one. Mm. 
there it is. And now you are one. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Mitch is in Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Mitch. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Merry Christmas, guys. Thanks for having me. Merry Christmas to you. What's up? I've got kind of a two-part money housing question, but I also want to tell Dr. Deloney, I've Never been a big psychology guy, but I'm pretty hooked on your show. I like the podcast, so keep it up. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks for listening. I think it's you and my mom right now, so I appreciate you, man. (laughs) (laughs) There's probably more. Yeah, uh, a few hundred thousand. My question is, (laughs) I'm uh, I'm 26. I'm on Baby Step 4. I'm excited to buy my first house in the spring. Um, I'm trying to decide if I should uh, if I should consider buying a duplex and renting it because I can get one for about the same price as a single family, and then I've got roughly seventy five thousand cash, eighteen or so is my emergency fund, and so I'm trying to decide exactly how much to put down because I would I wouldn't mind keeping a little extra cash too. So I was thinking more like fifty thousand, which is a little more than twenty percent, but just wanted some some guidance on whether you. Or do you think that's a good move on either one of those? I'd hold your emergency fund. If you want to keep it at six months instead of three, that's fine with me. And beyond that, I'd put everything else on the house. The idea, the more you put down, the less you got to pay off. Sure. What about the duplex? Uh, duplex is fine. Uh, the uh, good news is your renter lives next the door. The bad news is your renter lives next door. <laughs> And uh, sure. the other thing is, is that the buyer, when you get ready to sell it, is more of a wholesale investor than a retail Joe and Susie buyer with a picket fence and a little puppy dog that they want to live in the house with. And that, that single family is going to appreciate all things being equal faster than a duplex will in most markets because of who the buyer is on the other side. And uh, duplex buyers are typically not owner occupants. Um, you would be one of the rare exceptions. I get this question on the air fairly often, but it's still, out of all the number of duplexes in the United States, the vast majority are owned by non-owner occupants, and so that's typically who your buyer is. I didn't know that. That's new information for me. That's good to know, because I I thought they were all, I'm going to buy one side and rent out the other side and knock out this mortgage. Hardly any of them. Hmm. Most of them are, matter of fact, I used to buy... When I was buying real estate back in the day, I'd buy like a whole street of them. Right. You know, I'd buy like 10 of them or 15 of them or yep. something like that. And it just turns into a little a miniature apartment complex right. sort of thing like that. Or if you own 10 or 15 of them all over town even, it's the same situation. So it's no – I mean, th- there are people that do it. Now, the zero lot line looks like a duplex, but you own half of it. Mm-hmm. Or, and it's called different things in different markets, but it's a meaning you have, have a shared wall, right. a single, but it's not a technically a condominium in most mm-hmm. cases. And so um, those are almost all owner occupied, right? Um, depending on the market and you know, depending on the city and, and what's going on there. But mm-hmm. but um, yeah, you just think about the property and go, okay, who's your buyer on the other end, and how sophisticated are they, and are they going a retail buyer or a wholesale buyer? Obviously, if they're a wholesale buyer, the property's not going to appreciate as much. Tim's in Milwaukee. Hi, Tim. How are you? Better than I deserve, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, man. Dave, What's I up? A question. Well, I got a question for you. My wife and I are looking at paying off our home. Good. We've got a balance on it right now of $83,000. Mm-hmm. And we have about 375000 sitting in uh, tax-deferred accounts. Mm-hmm. And we have our emergency fund fully funded, and 
our concern is that if we go only pay off this house right now, we're going to have a tax bill of about eighteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars due. Mm-hmm. Um, my concern would be one of two things: do we go and go ahead and do it, pay the house off, pay the eighty-three thousand, mm-hmm. and then just stop contributing to our deferred comp or our retirement next year, just to fund uh, the taxes? How old are you guys? Um, I'm 54. My wife's 49. Okay. And so what type of account is this that you can pull it out without a penalty? Uh, mine's in the deferred comp. So I'm a uh, retired law enforcement. Okay. So you can get that with only being taxed with no penalty then in your situation. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I'd pay off the house. And uh, I'd wait after okay. the first. I'd wait after the first of the year to do it. So your tax bill's not due for uh, fourteen months or fifteen months then. Okay. And that gives you that time to, if you wanted to pull the plug on their deferred comp and build up the eighteen thousand, that'd be the same thing. Um, it'd be really neat if you could do the deferred comp and cash flow the eighteen thousand during that f- fifteen months that you've got to save it up. That was my question. What's the what's your what's your Payment every month. What's your mortgage? Well, it's only three hundred ninety-two dollars. Oh yeah. wow! Okay. Okay. What's your household income? About one hundred twenty thousand. Okay. You might be able to continue your deferred comp and save eighteen thousand in fifteen months if you wait till January to do this. That would be best of all worlds because that way you're paying your taxes out of pocket, which has, in effect, mathematically, is the same thing as investing that much more is the way it'll turn out. And because otherwise you would have pulled the money out of there to pay the taxes and would have lost that much. So, um, or not put it in, which is the same thing again. So basically by doing both, we're adding to the net effect of your investments. I'd pay it off, yeah, but I'd wait till January to do it. Hey, thanks for the call. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Connor is in Seattle, Washington. Hey, Connor, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Merry Christmas. Hey, Dave and John. Merry Christmas. Thanks for taking my call. I'm sure. honored to be on with you guys. You too. How can we help? Okay. Um, so I'm 27, single, and baby set four, five, and six, and I've been thinking about looking for a house um, pretty soon here. My mother and father are starting to go through, they're going through their will again, and my mom has presented me with kind of a, a what what feels to me like an unusual um, option. So uh, she's let me know that I have about um, 750000 in inheritance coming whenever whenever they, they pass away. Um, she has given me the option to purchase the house that I'm living in, which is their house, from them at a discounted rate, um, and it wouldn't be quite seven hundred fifty thousand. But um, I've been just kind of trying to figure out how to run the numbers, figure out if this is a good choice for me or if I should, um, I guess, politely decline. The house they're currently living in. No, excuse me. One of their rental homes oh, that, I I, that I am renting. That oh, renting you're living in. Several roommates. Okay. Yes, I'm. I'm currently. And so, what there. would you be paying for the house? Uh, about uh, six hundred thousand. Okay, and what is the house worth? Well, I'm working on that. Um, I think the 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 main real estate sites think anywhere between a million and a million two. Okay, so you would be getting four hundred thousand dollars of your inheritance up front. And they would Between discount your inheritance and, by the amount of the equity. Um, yeah, that's correct. Okay. All right. Would you buy this house otherwise? Um, well, not at the price that it would normally list at, but, uh, yeah, if I could afford it, sure. Okay. I like the house. Okay. Well, if your parents are doing a good good estate planning, they can gift you that much under the Unified Estate Tax Credit. As long as their uh, net worth is under $40 million right now, they can pull that off. Uh, and uh, you, they won't have any taxes on it. You won't have any taxes on it. And you would get $400,000 less upon their death than you would get now, right? Is that so? so you're paying full price for the house. You're just getting part of your inheritance early to buy the house with. 
Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the, the inheritance part is a little bit complicated because I have siblings. This particular 750 came from I have five siblings on my dad's yeah. side. This okay, the, the last part, thing I would tell you is this. I, I would get the house appraised or get a real estate agent to give you a comparative market analysis, and it should not be at 100% of value it should because if they sold the house they wouldn't get a hundred percent of value they'd get about eighty percent of value or eighty eight percent of value so somewhere around eighty five percent of value minus the mortgage is the amount deducted from your inheritance and then yeah there's no reason not to do that deal as long as you can afford the six hundred thousand dollar mortgage this is the Dave Ramsey show $640,000. I want him to come clean about a credit card that he doesn't know about. I am going to probably pay a student loan for the rest of my life. I just don't even know where to begin. And I don't know what to do when I'm scared. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Dave Ramsey Show. You can have is dumb, cash is king, paid off home mortgage, has taken the place of BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, ho- uh, author of Redefining Anxiety, a best-selling book now, is our co-host today here on the air. He's answering your questions about life, emotional well-being, and uh, crazy relatives at Christmas. <laughs> and we're going to talk about your money and your life as well. The phone number is 888 825 Lindsay is with us in Amarillo, Texas. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Well, hey, y'all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. What's up? Okay, I have a question slash marital debate that I'm going to ask you to help me with. I'll get out my whistle and my striped shirt. (laughs) Okay, thank you. Might need it. My husband and I are on Baby Step 2. We have paid off $47,000 this year. Wow. We found out recently. I know, right? We're kicking butt. But we found out recently we're expecting our first baby in April. Congratulations. Very excited. Thank you. Um, So now we're in storm mode. We've been saving up. Um. Now it's time to start thinking about nursery stuff. And given that we're first-time parents, we have no idea kind of what to expect as far as how much this is going to cost to furnish a nursery. So my parents wanted to bless us, and they gifted us with $1,500 and said, this is for you to furnish a nursery with. Well, my husband is very much in the baby step, too. We're going to save up and pay off debt mode. And he's like, that is just more room for our shovel. We need to pile it on baby step, too. And Let the baby sleep on the floor. That's right. What kind of guy is this? <laughs> I mean, he's very, he's logical, and I think his heart is in the right place. You know, he's like, I'm talking about long term, what's best for our daughter is to pay off um, our debt as soon as we can. So we should be shopping Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, like getting anything used or free or donated we can. But I'm like, well, this was a gift, and it's not out of our income. It was to bless us, to help prepare for this baby. And so we're going back and forth on like, what is okay to budget? Okay, How much stop. of this money should we yeah, spend? Right, I'll go ahead and throw okay. the flag. I'll go ahead and throw the flag. Blow the whistle. <laughs> all right. He he's out, he's out of bounds. You win. And the only yeah. re- the only reason is this. The only reason is this. That your parents bought furniture for your nursery. That's what they did. Mm-hmm. Now, are you going to take okay. it back and get a refund and go buy used furniture? So that you can put it on the debt snowball, well, that would be ludicrous. Yeah. And this is the same thing. Yeah. This Because okay. they did not give you a gift with no strings attached. They, in, in a sense, walked with you to the store and bought the nursery furniture. They just let you pick right. it out, what it looks in like. In this right? case, they're just letting you pick it out. They didn't say, well, y'all do whatever you want. Do something nice for the baby. They said, right. furniture in the freaking nursery it was very specific <laughs> right right yeah yes sir and so it would be dishonoring to the gift 
to do anything with it other okay. than what they said. Now, had they given you $15,000, not $1,500, <laughs> I'd be having a discussion with your mother and your dad about that's a little nuts. And we need permission right. to use some of this to get out of debt because it's a little over the top. We don't even make that kind of money. Okay. But $1,500 is not, not going to change your life or the child's life one way or the other. And these days, that will buy you about 11 diapers. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to me, Dr. D. Do not tell me that. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> what, what is your household income? We make a combined income of about 100000 a year. Yeah, okay. So this is 1.5% of your income. Yeah. It's irrelevant. And okay. it's a, for somebody who's gazelle intense... Fifteen hundred dollars can feel like a million bucks, and so accept it. it right? does. Accept yeah. it and yeah. and live in it and love it. Yeah. And by the way, you're not supposed to be paying on your debt snowball with a baby on the way anyway. You're supposed to be stopped, push pause. We are. We have piling we up cash. Probably we put back probably eleven thousand in savings yeah. right and, now. And so we this money. Yeah, but but now had your mom and dad been more vague about the verbiage around the gift, we might have a different discussion. But they were very precise. It is as if they took you to the store. And you picked it out and they wrote the check. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're wanting to take it back and put it on and, right. and get a refund and put it on debt and buy used furniture at a garage sale. No, we're not doing that. That's that's just dishonoring to the gift. Again, if the numbers were out of whack, I'd have a discussion with the giver and, and get asked to be released from the obligation. But, um, you know, it, that would just be out of whack. And now, Lindsay, you get one... One, looking him in the eyes. One, I told you so. And then after that, you got to say, thank you for being a husband who's sticking to our convictions. No, I don't even think she gets one. She just said, Dave, just blame it on me. As Dave said. Dave said, all right. So just you Dave. get one Dave. Yeah, you get one Dave said. And then be grateful that you got a husband that's committed yeah. to this plan long term. Absolutely. Because he's going be, to be a great provider. Oh, man. And um, not super ethical, but a good provider. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he's good. <laughs> he's good. You're lucky, Lindsay. Yeah, you're you a are. good team. He's good a good for you. He's a, he's a good guy, and you know. And the, now, some of you parents, you guys need to think that. To me, the ethics don't change, but the ratios make the discussion weirder. Okay, like I had a young couple one time that I was coaching a thousand years ago, and their household income was twenty six thousand dollars. Once they got married, and two weeks after they got married, her dad shows up and hands them the keys to a $40,000 paid-for car. And they have $60,000 in student loan debt. Hmm. Now, do they sell that car and pay off the student loan? Yeah. 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 You yeah, put I them do. in a weird position right there. I right? do. I, I'm going to, but dad's going to be pissed. Right. And I told him, I said, you need to call your dad and tell him that this was silly. And he didn't even talk to him about it. He just shows up, the goob. There's con manipulation control freak stuff in that, too. Well, he just thought he wanted us to have a safe car. Yeah, bull. He wanted to show off. And if you're creating a nursery, not for your baby, but for the Instagram photo, that's a problem, right? Ooh. When you set up, uh, I see these nurseries that are lighting systems. <laughs> Oh my God! The lighting system man. in them. These fancy furniture and gizmos and contraptions. That little baby for the first six to nine months will want one thing: you. Real no. close to him. Food, right? in the, food in a dry diaper. And, and, yeah. and a bit. Well, I and whatever you spend on it, they're going to poop on it. So just get ready. Exactly. So and so anyway, buy a nice. Set up a, a a nursery, but don't go overboard. Well, they don't fifteen hundred. That's what I'm saying. That's perfect. Fifteen hundred. Right? That's perfect. Fifteen thousand. I'm I'm calling. I'm going to throw the flag the other way on mom and dad right. and go, look, that's out of line. I know you're excited about the first grandbaby. I was too. Uh, but, you know, we had learned boundaries with our grown kids and not go dropping grenades in their house. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll Pull take it. Pull the 12, plug and just roll grenade. it into the living room and see how this works out, right? <laughs> just see how the in laws act, okay? Just see how, yes. And, and Papa Dave has done screwed up something again. <laughs> Seagull management. Swoop and poop. Swoop in and poop Listen, on stuff. America, anyone who wants to throw a $15,000 grenade my way, we will figure that out on the fly. You'll catch I'm it. I'm committed You'll to catch figuring it. it out as we go. That's right. You can be bribed. <laughs> I will Speaking figure that out. of ethics. <laughs> I'll figure it out. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.
One of the things that makes the Dave Ramsey Show unique from other shows is that we genuinely care about our listeners. That's why we are very intentional about choosing our advertisers. Blinds.com offers high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices. And then their customer service is truly unbeatable. They make it simple to shop for blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping right to your door. And Blinds.com will help you every step of the way, just like they've helped thousands of my listeners with free design help by phone and online. Plus, they guarantee the perfect fit. Go today and take advantage of this week's special offer. If you want to get some quick advice on life and money, but only have a few minutes, we're excited to tell you about our latest podcast called The Ramsey Call of the Day. That'll give you the life-changing content that you get here, but in under 10 minutes. I'll be, I'll be on it along with Ramsey Network personalities, Ken Coleman, Rachel Cruz, Chris Hogan, Christy Wright, Anthony O'Neill, and my co-host today, Dr. John Deloney. The Ramsey Call of the Day could be anything from an inspirational story of knocking out debt to tips on how to deal with loss of income or how to make decisions in this crazy world. Subscribe to Ramsey Call of the Day on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or the Ramsey Network app, or listen on your smart speaker by saying, play Ramsey Call of the Day. As a matter of fact, if your smart speaker heard me say that, it'd probably just start doing it. There you go. That's how that works. Blinds.com is our question of the day. Uh, they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure, you pick the wrong color, they will remake your window blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping. With the new promos they run all the time, always use the promo code RAMSEY and you can get a good deal. All right, today's question comes from Roger in Kentucky. Roger writes, My wife and I have been married 10 years and we have three children. I work as a federal law enforcement officer and my wife is a teacher assistant. We make about $110,000 combined and we own two houses, which one is a rental property. The issue I have is my wife keeps failing her final year in college and it's getting too expensive to keep letting her return. She's been attending college over the past eight years. I want to move from my career progression, but she doesn't want to leave. I could take a promotion in another state and make $100,000 on my own. What should I do? I really wish my wife would find another job. I've explained to her if she was making more money, I could ease up on overtime and be home more. Whew, Dave, there's a lot here. Um, here's what I'll just call out immediately. If you've been in college for eight years and you continue to fail – your last year, your last semester, it's not because you're not smart enough. It's not because there isn't the academic support and help and assistance for you. There's something else at play here. Whether somebody is choosing or they are um, not intentionally but sabotaging themselves or this is the last shred of control this wife in this relationship has, um, but there's something bigger going on here than just simply – I can't get past that last semester in college. Now, of course, depending on if what you this, make it through the, three years of college, they're going to help without you out. flunking out. Right, you have the intellectual gray matter to make it through the last year. You are correct. So I'm calling BS. That's right. And so what I this sounds harsh when I say it this way, but if you choose not to get the assistance, the tutoring, the support, and put it this way, colleges have an incentive to help you graduate. Because that helps them with their rankings. That helps them with a number of internal metrics. Now, failing eight years in a row is in their last semester is not good for their reputation. It reflects bad on the college, right? Yeah. So if you are choosing to not do the things you need to do to pass. Yeah, like go to class, do the homework, take the test, study for the test, that kind of stuff. Then you are choosing to fail. Yeah. Either intentionally or 
um, subconsciously for to not get all psychobabble. So there's something else going on here, Roger, that sounds like you and your wife are not on the same page. And this is the last shred of control she has in this house. You wanna- so you think by tanking this deal that that's her holding on to what? Probably not intentionally. Because he, 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 cause he wants her to go to work and big time and instead of just being a, an assistant and make some money, and she's afraid of doing that. So the way to avoid that sabotage? Not that directly, but it might be I'm up with the kids late. I got to get up super early. I don't feel good. Little Timmy was sick today, so I couldn't go to class. I wasn't able to go to tutoring for this exam. I had to miss this exam. So you create this ecosystem where you are unintentionally not intentional right? And you are not successful with your final goal. And he wants to move. He wants her to make more money. He wants her to get another job. And I don't hear a lot about what does she want to do? What role does she see herself? What does she envision herself playing in this family? And it sounds like Roger and his wife are not together. They're not unified in this. Well, yeah, that's forward. for sure. Right. So what's the recommendation? What do, what do they do? The recommendation is Roger has some very clear goals for his wife, I'm going to recommend that Roger back out of the, here's what you should be doing and here's what we could be doing if, and he needs to sit down and ask his wife, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a stay-at-home mom? What's your perfect world look like in five years? There you go. And how do I help us get there? How do we get there together? Yeah. And he might want to move. He might want to. She doesn't want to leave. Well, he needs to take that into consideration. They need to have a unified conversation here because they're running two separate lives. They're roommates here. Hmm. So what do you think the probability is he wants her to fail secretly because it keeps him in, it keeps his uh, narrative going where he gets to move and take the other job? Well, it makes him the victim, right? And he gets to, but he gets to throw out the, um, maybe he creates the ecosystem where she can't win subconsciously or consciously. I don't know. So that this thing, so that it melts down and she has to give up and, well, we got to move and take my other job now. It could. And what you get is couples who li- get in this self-reinforcing dance. Yeah. I'm the victim. Yeah. I'm the victim. I'm the winner. I'm the strong one. I'm the one keeping the house together. I'm the one keeping the money together. And then you get the stuck in these roles. Crap. Nobody wants to be in these situations. And that's when somebody's got to use your language. Someone's got to throw the flag, stop the dance, turn the music off, get away and say, what are we doing? Where are we going? Mm-hmm. I love you and want to see you successful. And I feel like you're sabotaging my desire to come home. Yeah, this is thick enough in this language. They probably need to sit down with a good marriage counselor. A hundred percent. Okay. And have somebody, just have somebody call time out and go, uh, you're in crazy cycle here. Mm-hmm. Stop the crazy. Just a minute. Stop, 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 stop dancing stop. and just yeah. put it all Egrich, on the table. Egrich calls it in love and respect. He calls it right. the, the crazy cycle. Hmm. That when someone doesn't get love, then they don't give respect. And when they don't give respect, they don't give love. And when they don't give love, they don't get respect. And male, female, you know, and around. And, and so begins the, the washing machine. The and crazy people, cycle. Dave, people will, will live in that dance for a decade because they don't want to have one hard Stop the music conversation. Mm-hmm. They just continue and continue and yeah. continue. Well, you're afraid if you stop the music, there might not be a chair. That's exactly right. Musical chairs. Right. Yeah. So and somebody stop. The metaphors are getting thick here, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. That's very interesting. There's a lot between the lines there. A lot. Atlanta is on the line. Nick is calling. Hi, Nick. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How you doing, sir? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? So, uh, long story short, I'm 27 years old. I'm a teacher, full-time teacher. I'm married. I'm, I'm engaged to be married this upcoming July uh, with my fiance. Yay! We are recent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, super blessed. Super blessed for sure. Um, we recently bought a home together, and uh, I guess I have kind of a two-part question. Um, I just wanted to get your opinion on if we are on a on the on the right path, doing things the right way financially. And then also um, any tips that you might have for uh, a successful marriage in terms of combining finances, because like you talked about before in the show, I want to talk to people that have been in the game and been successful for not, not the quick fix, but the long term. Um, so right now, just so you know, um, we're on baby step two. Um, the only debt that we really have is, is my student loan. She doesn't have any student loan. Uh, my student loan is about, Seventy-five hundred dollars. Uh, I have. What, what, what will be your household income when you do get married in July? Uh, Ninety thousand dollars. Excellent. Okay. Good. Are, are you? Have you guys talked about uh, stuff like the baby steps? You're obviously acquainted with them. Is she? 
Um, yeah, I've talked about it with her. Um, I listen to you pretty much every day, and uh, she definitely knows who you are. Uh, I'm <laughs> definitely more um, more uh, more knowledgeable about what your message is and what your steps are than she is, but she understands the philosophy and. Um, you know, I'm trying to get her on the same same page as that as well. Well, I think the conversation starts with just something like the um, people who win with money and win with relationships. I'm reading about this, honey, um, are in agreement on their plan. Mm-hmm. And so uh, let's look at this plan together and see if we can both be in agreement and enthusiastic about this plan. If not, we need to make up our own that we're both in agreement and enthusiastic about Mine's not the only way to get there. I believe with the data that we have that it's the shortest path to wealth. But uh, but if you choose to go a different way, that's up to you. It's more important that you're in agreement than that you follow me. That's what's more important. And then secondly, if you want to do it the most efficient way, I would say ours is, but you can make that decision as adults, okay? But yeah, let's get into agreement. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. CHM is not health insurance, but it is Christians helping other Christians by sharing each other's medical bills. The medical bill sharing from CHM was exactly the way the website described it. There were no surprises, no bait and switch, no hidden agenda. CHM did everything they said they would by sharing all of our eligible needs. We like that it's a nonprofit ministry and that we were being better stewards of our money, all while helping other families. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. That's chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. John Deloney Ramsey, personality, is my co-host today here on the air. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Megan is with us in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Megan. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. I see on my screen you're debt-free. Merry Christmas. Hi, Dave. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Thank you. How much you pay off? Um, $98,593. That's Love a that. lot of money, Megan. And how long did yep. this take? Five years. Wow. And your range of income? Um, started off at 48230 and is now 51441 Cool. Cool. What do you do for a living? I'm a speech and language pathologist at an elementary school. Mm-hmm. Very good. So what kind of debt was your $99,000? I had a Visa card through my bank. I had a limited card, a Macy's card, my car payment, and student loans. So you're kind of normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deeply in debt and broke. Yes. How old are you? I'm 39. So what happened at 34 years old? I just lost track. I was living on my own. Um, just kept on spending my money. Um, what woke you up? Not being able to pay my bills, really. Mm-hmm. And um, overdrafts from my checking account, from my savings account, and just um, God, you? really. I mean, you know, he's the one you? who woke me up, too, and the debt. Yeah, huh? so, so just looking at the overdrafts and the no yes. money scare you? Yes. So you're scared straight? Yes. Love it. Me, too. Yeah. Me, too. I don't ever want to go back. Nope, me either. Life is too freaking short. I remember one night, precisely, I can t- I could take you to the living room and the desk I was sitting at. I can see it in my mind as clear as anything. I tried to balance the checkbook. Back in the old days, we used to reconcile a checkbook by hand. 
It was right. not on the computer, and it was certainly not on the Internet. There wasn't one. And um, when I ch- balanced the checkbook, I realized, comparing it with the checks that the bank had sent me, that I had forgot to post some of them and that I was $400 in overdraft. And I remember sweat on my upper lip. Mm-hmm. I remember my heart racing. I remember sweat in the palms of my hands. And it was cold, cold sweat. Mm -hmm. I was so out of control and terrified. Mm -hmm. And I I just said, I'll never want to be there again, ever. Right. I remember sitting at work at the end of the day with a coworker or friend, and he would help me balance out my checkbook because I was awful at it. And it didn't work. Nope. Overdraft, overdraft, overdraft. So what'd you do? You hit the bottom. You got scared straight. Tell me what you did. What was the first thing you did? Well, I was attending a local church, and I was talking to a friend at church one day, telling her about my finances, and she wanted to know if I heard about um, Dave Ramsey, Financial Peace, and I said no, so she was telling me more about it. And then she introduced me to Aaron Littles, who also him and his wife did their debt scream through you. I met Aaron Littles. He talked to me more about it, wanted to hear my story, and he um, offered to sponsor me to take the Financial Peace University at the church. Wow. It was a blessing. Wow. Big blessing. I'll bet you'll do that for somebody yep. someday, won't you? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And Very so cool. Five years is a long grind. What kept you going for five years? I didn't want to disappoint God. I didn't want to disappoint Aaron, and I didn't want to disappoint myself, and I did not want to live paying other people back. So you just Mm -hmm. kept at it. That's 60 months. You just kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. Yes. You really got disgusted. Yes. You got so disgusted it lasted five years. Three extra jobs on top of being a speech path. That's already a job that takes a lot of patience and time. What were your job? What was your job? I did. My first uh, side job was home health care. So after my full-time job, I went and saw clients wow. in their home. And I did that for the five years. And then um, within the school district, we're um, offered what's called T-Pay roll. So we were able to sit in on staffing meetings, and I would get paid for that. And then another friend offered me a side job to work under her for doing brand ambassador where I went into grocery stores, liquor stores, and I handed out samples of wine and liquor for like 18 to possibly $25 an hour for three hours. That's how you made it five years. Let's be honest. (laughs) It was the alcohol. You had lots of alcohol (laughs) samples, right? (laughs) Yeah. So I did that off and on. Um, That was, you know, sporadic here and there. And then Aaron, he offered me, two years ago, he offered me to work on the side doing his recruiting company that he um, built up. So I would do that after work as well, recruiting nurses via the phone. This guy has made sure you won. Oh, yeah. He is amazing. He's amazing. What a great mentor. Really? Very proud of him. Very proud of you. Well done. All right, Rockstar, you did this. You're a hero. I mean, you bust through. You're by yourself. Three jobs. You lean in. You keep at it. You keep scratching. You keep clawing. You're scrappy for five freaking years, and you pay off $99,000. You are an impressive young woman. Now you get to mentor somebody else like you've been mentored. There's a few people listening to this. One of them is just like you were. Tell her how to do it. What's the key to getting out of debt? Getting mad, sitting down, getting an accountability partner, putting all your debts and monthly income on a budget, and just go at it. And if you can get a second job, go for it. Sell stuff. Stop eating out. Stop buying stuff that you really don't need. That's how to do it. You did a lot of sacrifice for five years. Was it worth it? It was. It was. What's your big goal when you get done with this and you got a pile of money and you're a millionaire? You're a Chris Hogan, everyday millionaire. What's your big goal? What do you want to do with money? To invest, save, give. Mm -hmm. 
be healthy, enjoy life. There you go. Retire <laughs> without any financial problems. There you go. Well done. I'm so, so proud of you. I know Aaron Thank is. You. We are all, we are, all of us at Ramsey, are, we love people like you. You're an incredible hero. You're Thank out there you. doing it. You're scratching and clawing and making it happen. Nobody handed you nothing. You went mm-hmm. and took it legally and morally took it. Well done. Hard work, sacrifice, discipline, dirty words in America for some people today. Mm. Uh, you didn't wait on Washington to fix your life. You just went and fixed it. I'm <laughs> so proud of you. Well done. Thank you. We've got a copy of Chris Hogan's book for you, Everyday Millionaires, and that is the next chapter in your story, Megan, without a doubt. That is your next chapter. You keep going. You keep. Now it's time to be intentional, not intense, and uh, dial this thing up and make it happen. So very, very, very well done. All right, ninety nine thousand dollars counted off in five years, making forty eight to fifty one plus three jobs. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt free. Yeah. Hey, that I don't care how, how it's done. I don't care how tough you think you are. A five-year grind. <laughs> yeah, that is gangster, dude. That, that is that's, uh, that's calluses, man. Man, that's calluses. That's not. This is not for the faint of heart. This nope. is not for the wuss. You gotta be willing to step it up. That girl's a warrior, man. I mean, she looked in the mirror for five years and said, "I'm worth it. I'm worth it." I'm you don't want it. you don't want her to draw down on you. She's a warrior, man. She get her done. Wow. And if not, she's got a trunk full of alcohol samples. She'll find a way. (laughs) Megan will find a way. Good for her. What a stud. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I love Christmas. Are you still looking for great Christmas deals? Well, our famous $10 sale is not over. That means you can shop over 50 of our best-selling books and envelopes, only $10 or less. You can get the number one bestseller, The Total Money Makeover, Chris Hogan's number one bestseller, Everyday Millionaires, for 10 bucks. You can get Dr. John Deloney's Redefining Anxiety for 10 bucks. And we extended our discount on the starter envelopes. You can still get yours for only $5. Stock up on books that'll help you and, more importantly, help a bunch of people in your life. Yeah, so like 100 bucks will get you 10 bucks. This is known as a good deal. So stock up. Get ready for 2021. Time to reset. Time to get going again. Visit the online store at DaveRamsey.com backslash store and get these great deals. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Tiffany is in Washington, D.C. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? Hey, Dave. Hey, Dr. D. Happy holidays to you guys. Merry Christmas to you. How can we help? Yeah, so I just want to say thank you. As of February this year, me and my husband, we eliminated $200,000 of debt. Ding, um, ding. Number two. <laughs> wow. Right? Look at you. <laughs> wow. I, w- I will say that your name was a, a bad word first initially because I found you, um, but he's slowly coming around to, to, to Dave. Um, he has no choice now. But um, <laughs> So we finished uh, Baby Step 3, 4, and 5 now. Um, the question I have is we currently own our town home, and this was a pre-baby, um, and we're looking to buy a single-family home. We sat down, crunched the numbers, and said that it's going to take us about two years to save the 20% down right, on a home. Right now on our our town home, we have PMI. Um, And the question is, do we take a portion of the 20% to pay down our current mortgage to get to, you know, eliminate the PMI and save the rest in cash? 
or do we just save all of the money, the 20% in cash, or throw everything at the current mortgage, knowing that we're going to sell the home? It doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to get your money back. How, what's, going to get in, what's going to cause you to have the most money the fastest? Probably paying it down and getting rid of the PMI, depending on how long you're going to stay there. But you're going to have to buy an appraisal yeah. to get rid of the PMI. Right. And I call the, the, the appraisal is, is just $380, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the PMI that we pay um, monthly is $300. So yeah. I'm thinking if we're staying here. Yeah, for it, makes two sense, years, it makes sense to get rid of it if you yeah. can pay it down. Right. You're exactly right. And then you're going to okay. sell the townhome and make the move to the other place with, a, with money that you've saved up and the equity from the townhome. Right, right. And the new mortgage yep. is going to be a 15-year fixed where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. Exactly, exactly. I just didn't know if it was better to have the cash on hand. Doesn't matter. Um, so it, so we're not dependent on selling the townhome. Yeah, they're going to give, you, they're going to give you the cash when you sell the townhome, so it doesn't matter. It's going to turn back into cash. Okay, okay. So either way we, we do it, it, it really doesn't matter. If I we, would throw it at the townhome as fast and as hard as I can. Uh, if you mm-hmm. want to leave maybe an extra 10000 or something out to the side for earnest money or something, because you're probably going to do a contingency sale. Uh, but in this market, unless you're in some kind of weird niche market, you sh- shouldn't have any trouble flipping the town home and getting the other deal closed right on time. You shouldn't have any trouble at all. So very well thought out. Very well done. 200000 Congrats. What a moment in history to pay off $200,000 February of 2020. Yeah, and then it happened and then i could see a husband saying i don't like it. i don't like it all right i'm in <laughs> i'm in tiffany we are geniuses <laughs> yes we are <laughs> tiffany you're lucky you married me <laughs> denver colorado linda's on the line hi linda how are you hi dave i'm doing great well i'm not doing great but i have a couple of questions for you okay um um i my mom is we just um, moved her closer to me, and she's in a memory care center. Mm-hmm. And my brother and I were um, designated as her powers of attorney. Mm-hmm. And um, my brother passed away on December 6th. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry, Linda. And um, he left his 403B to my mom. And I was just wondering, I don't know what to do with it. And my son... He he's one of your financial stars, and he suggested I call you. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad. What happened to your brother, honey? Um, he had um, cirrhosis of the liver. Mm. Okay. And and how how old is uh, your mom? My mom is 84. And how old are you? I am 59. Okay. All right. Well, his 403B will go to her. What I would tell you to do is just go to, you're in control of it because you're her power of attorney. So you can move it right. and, and do proper things with it. Um, she is the beneficiary on the 403B. So it pays out and uh, be in touch with that company and let them know that you're going to roll it to an inherited IRA. And you're, okay. And you're gonna, and that will there will be no taxes on it now, but there is a required withdrawal, uh, one tenth per year, uh, for ten years, of the balance. What's the balance okay. on it? I think it's around two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. So go to DaveRamsey.com and click on Smart Vester. And it'll drop down okay. a list of the people we recommend in your area. We're not in the investment business, but we have a network of people that have the heart of a teacher, and they're going to gently and carefully walk you through this. They're not salespeople. They're teachers. Okay. And they're going to show you exactly what to do and how to do it, and they'll help you pick out some mutual funds for your mom to roll this this IRA into. And um, okay. and then it will have to begin to draw down one tenth, and they can teach you all the details about that. It's it's a fairly simple transaction, but it has a lot of pieces of paper to it. Okay. And they can walk you through it, and where it's not overwhelming, while you're dealing with all this stuff that you're dealing with. I mean, you got mom in the memory center, and and you've lost your brother. You don't need a bunch of stuff stacked on you, but you also need to pay attention enough so you know what happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even in the midst of your right. even in the midst of your stress and your grief. So click SmartVestor at DaveRamsey.com. It'll drop down a list of the SmartVestor pros in your area. You can contact the one that you choose, talk to them. And here's the thing. 
I want you, when you sit with them, on behalf of your mom, to have a good, listen to this word, a good feeling. Okay. That will give you peace that you're dealing with someone that you feel good about. Okay. Because you don't need to feel jerked around right now. Okay, yeah. And if you don't have a good feeling, get up and walk out. Okay. But you should, because you should be dealing with someone who understands, empathizes with what you're going through, and wants to teach you so that later when you wake up six months from now, you're like, like, what did I do again? I forget. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you did, okay? (laughs) Okay. Okay. And they, they right. can help you walk through that. And Linda, was life with your brother yeah. pretty tough? It was what? Say that again. How was life with your brother? Were y'all close? Yes, we were. So this Christmas, before Christmas, maybe Christmas Eve, I want you to spend some time by yourself. And I want you to put the money stuff aside. And I want you to write your brother a long letter and let him know how much you love him. And you may read that letter to your mom on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. But don't don't make yourself too busy this holiday to not experience the loss of missing your brother. Okay? Okay. You have Thank a lot you. of duty and a lot of responsibility, and it would be easy to walk past the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry yep. that you lost him. And it was kind of the crime. Yeah. Mm. I hate that for you. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, but that's the technical, tactical thing. You're going to roll it to an inherited IRA with a Smart Vester Pro, and you're going to understand what you're doing, and you're going to have peace about it. Dave, taking this exact same situation, let's let's get another scenario where mom is on Medicaid. Does this mess up her Medicaid now with an inherited IRA? Yeah. Okay. Medicaid, Medicaid is welfare. When you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you don't need your off. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Different, it's a different scenario, but I mean, welfare, you don't need welfare when you get a quarter you million dollars. You get that kind dollars. of money. That's right. So, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's Absolutely a good thing. not. It's yeah. a good thing. That puts this hour of the Dave Ramsey Show in the books. intentional about your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions broadcasting from the dollar car rental studios it's the dave ramsey show where debt is dumb cash is king and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the bmw as the status symbol of choice I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author of the book, Redefining Anxiety, what it is, what it's not, and how to get your life back, is my co-host today here on the air. We're taking your calls at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Peter starts off this hour in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Peter. How are you? Hello, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, man. What's up? Well, uh, um, I'm uh, 64. My wife and I have been married for 33 years, and uh, we have four children. And our old, our youngest child uh, has autism. He was adopted late in our marriage, and uh, so uh, we're trying to provide for him after we retire. Uh, we know he's going to lose. He's going to lose my company's insurance as soon as we retire. If we when we go on. Uh, on uh, our social security. So we're trying to, you know, provide for him and make sure that he's taken care of. Okay. And now so- the specific question is how do we do that? You know, and uh, we've got a lot of people that, uh, you know, aren't experts giving us advice. And, uh, you know, one, one person said, you know, uh, you need to get a physician's letter of capacity so that he can get a, a social security. 
uh, you know, uh, so that he's so that he's taken care of. Now we don't we don't anticipate him leaving our house uh, because of his because of his capabilities. Uh, he's he's higher on the spectrum, but still he uh, we don't we don't we don't he's vulnerable, you know, out there, and we don't think that uh, you know he's ready to make the move. He's twenty six years old. I'm sorry, twenty three years old, and uh, so we're we're kind of at a crux right now as to what we should do. Okay. Um, the truthful answer is I'm not positive what you should do. So what do I do when I'm in a situation like that? Uh, I would um, do what you did. I would call somebody I thought was an expert, and apparently I'm not. But <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, yeah, I would call Xander Insurance uh, or someone like them that is a an insurance broker that brokers health insurance for several different companies in multiple states. Uh -huh. Now, obviously, you're going to want right. someone that brokers insurance in Arizona. In the insurance world where we have an unusual case and you're trying to get a, a, an unusual type of insurance or an unusual situation insured, we call it their make. they make a market, meaning they find an insurance uh -huh. company that will cover it. And so, like, uh -huh. you hear bizarre stuff, like a pianist uh, uh, insuring their hands or something with Lloyd's of London. That's called making a market. They found an insurer that would do something unusual. This is not that unusual, but it is it, it is a, a nuanced situation that I don't know the answer to. So I would talk to some people in the insurance world and say, okay, what are my options? What can we buy? Can a 23-year-old... The high functioning autism living with their parents by their own insurance. Uh, yeah. I suppose they could. I think that's very possible. Yeah, they could right. just simply, under right. Obamacare, pre existing condition doesn't count against you. I suppose that he could just buy insurance. Of course, that's going to mean you're buying it, you're paying for it, but it would be as if he's doing the transaction with something like a Blue Cross Blue Shield or something. Uh, I think that's yeah. possible, yeah. but I can't slam my fist down and say, I know the answer to your question because I don't. So what I would do in your situation is I would talk to insurance brokers. And the reason for that is that means they represent a whole bunch of different companies and their real person they represent is you. And they're just trying to find a place to slot you and give you the best deal. That's the best deal on health insurance. It's the best deal on car insurance and homeowner's insurance. It's the best deal on life insurance is, is to not go with a captive company that only sells their products, but instead a company, a broker that sells products of many different companies. And that's an example of that is Xander Insurance. So I just call those guys and see if they have... You know, if they do repping for health insurance in Phoenix, if not, they can give you a recommendation to someone that does. And um, I think they do. And then they can they can help you figure out how to insure this under the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. And um, there's a lot of things that you can um, force in those situations. Now, the fact that he's not a minor may play into it, but he's under 26 so that and he's in your household. So that should play into it. So he should be able to treat it just like he was a kid living at home with you. And it's under your insurance. But um, but it's not your insurance now. So I don't know. I don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, but I think it can be done. Uh, I think you've just got to scratch around and solve the issue. Uh, and then the second part of the equation is you've got to solve the issue for uh, how much of your wealth is allocated to a trust upon your death for his care and who's going to be in charge of his care uh, and managing the wealth that you leave to create an income for him to eat with upon your death. And that's the second part of the equation is the long-term planning for him. Uh, and that's a special needs trust in most cases in your will is what you do with that. That part I do know a little bit about. So I wish I could just give you the answer. I just don't know the nuances of that stuff. It's not my world. And I, I, I love that you're, that you're there for him. That's a pretty cool situation. Tough world, John. Yeah. And, one note to folks with kids, 23-year-olds, 22-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds of, of with medium to high-functioning autism. Dad mentioned he's doing well, but he's still vulnerable, and so we want to keep him here. I always want folks to lean up against that efficacy, the skill sets that those young people have. Give them the opportunity to 
get a part-time job, a close a job where they will be successful. They they earn dignity there, they earn their own money there, and they begin to develop social skills, especially if they got a coach with them that can really move beyond this initial diagnosis with especially with high functioning autistic kids. They are just extraordinary human beings and can find places where they can be really successful. And so, good for you. Yeah, very important. Dakari is in Washington DC. Hi Dakari, how are you? Hey John, how are you today? Sorry, I'm, I apologize. Hey Dave, how are you today? We're both here. It's all good. What's up, man? How can we help? <laughs> um, so I am 26 right now, and I live at home with my parents. And um, it sounds like I've you're whispering. Working. Are you like in a in a I closet? Am. Okay, yeah. you don't want him to find no, out. I, I'm at, I'm at work right ah, now. Okay, all right, all right. I thought you were hiding at your parents' yeah. house. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm busy during the day at the very least. Okay. Um. So I'm I'm 26. I live at home, and basically, I'm trying to figure out right now if it's best to buy. Um. And, or to rent. Now, just some context, I would be buying a four-unit owner-occupied multifamily. Um, no, no, um, no. Can you pay cash for it? Can I pay cash for it? How about this? Let's, um, do, let's do this, Dakari. Like if it's H F H A. Hey, um, Dakari, I'm going yes. to hold you over the break because um, we'll talk to you. I want to be able to flesh this out fully here after this break. So stay with us, and we'll be right back. Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help get you there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. We are talking with Dakari in Washington, D.C., 26 years old, thinking about moving out. Thought about buying a fourplex and live in one of the fourplexes. And that's about how far we got in the discussion. Is that a fair summary of what you told us so far, sir? Exactly. Exactly, okay. Dave. Cool. All right, John. So, Dakari... Um I was trying to cram it in there before the break, and then I thought I would breathe a little bit, and I try to force this on you. Here's the deal: Do you have twenty percent down on this fourplex? Um. So my understanding is, with owner occupancy, I could do a, under FHA, so three point five. And no, I don't have the twenty percent down. Yeah. So what you don't want to do as a twenty-six year old is put three percent down, scratch and claw, and borrow that three percent, and slide right in. And then have something come up, and you've got to fill the rent on those other three places. And suddenly mm -hmm. you are way, way over your head. And I know you want to get out, and you're trying to figure out a quick way to build wealth. You feel like you're behind because you're much, 26. How much money do you have saved, sir? Um, 26000 and, and, and what do you make just so Just so uh, 45 k um, and I do work for a property management company, so I'm kind uh -huh. of, uh, uh, I'm already in the game a little bit. Yeah, that's what gave you the bug. Yeah. That's what, that, that, I was the same way, man. I got my real estate license when I turned 18, and I couldn't wait to start buying real estate. It was my favorite mm -hmm. thing in the world. And I want you to mm -hmm. get some real estate. I just don't want, I'm with John. I don't want the real estate to get you. Okay, step yeah. one, move out and rent for six months. Okay. During that time, okay. you learn to pay your own bills. You emotionally separate from mom and dad that last degree, and you're standing on your own two feet, and there's some stuff happens spiritually, relationally, 
all that. You get all that out of the way. You buy your own freaking couch and that kind of stuff. And um, then kind of from that solid platform, we start talking about whether you buy something or not. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't ever tell somebody to buy something with 3% down. 3% down means you can't afford it. Okay. okay. For me, because I want you to have more margin than that. I don't want this thing to sneak up on you because here's the deal. If you have three tenants and you're one of the, and you're the fourth and uh, there's something like, let's just say something like a pandemic hit, who would have ever thought, mm-hmm. right? And no, the tenants, the thought? tenants were all servers at local restaurants and they all lost their mm-hmm. jobs and they can't pay. And you've got to pay the attorney to evict them and you have to pay the payment and you have absolutely mm-hmm. no cash because you put what little cash you had into this deal. You're what's known as screwed. I see. I see. And I've been there. And I love real estate, and I really want you to buy some real estate. But I, I by the time I was 26, I had $4 million worth, and I had too mm-hmm. much borrowed on it, and the bank got sold to another bank, flipped me on my head, and I spent two and a half years going bankrupt, losing everything I owned. I don't want you to have that experience. Okay, I see. Yeah. Go slower with more cash and more margin so that after you put the payment down, the down payment down, there's a lot of wiggle room in your life, and there's a big old pile of cash laying there in case st- bad stuff goes out, like the heating and air system. Not in case. It will. It will go out, right? Yes. Not, not, so, not, not so if, but when. Right. When crap happens. And you've been managing property, so look at it from the owner's perspective. They get the repair bills, the expenses. They get the vacancies. They get the non-paying tenants who go into Chapter 13 or worse, Chapter 11, and you don't get paid for nine months, and you can't evict them because you cannot file on them while they're in there. Um you know, we had a moratorium in my county on evictions uh, during the pandemic. We had this in our state, the state uh, Supreme Court came down and said no evictions for two months mm. during the pandemic. And we had a guy who had nothing to do with the pandemic. He was just a twerp and he do- wasn't paying his bill and we needed to get him out. We couldn't get him out. Mm. We're stuck. We're sitting there. Of course, we didn't have any payments. So it was no big deal. We worked it through. But, you know, if you had a bunch of that kind of stuff pile up on you, man, real estate gets less than fun. It is not a broke people's game. But here's what I've got really high hopes for Dakari. He's 26 years old. He's already thinking. He's got thousands of dollars in savings. Yep. Right? Against a, not a huge salary. Yep. So he's a saver. He's a planner. He's got the wheels cranking. Yep. He just needs the right the, the right plan, and he's going to make it happen. Yeah, just be the tortoise, not the hare. Yeah. Move out, rent something cheap, get you a used couch, buy your own groceries, pile up some more cash, work an extra job, pile up some more cash, then do your first deal. 12 months after you move out at the earliest. Mm. Dan is in Denver. Hi, Dan. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. So, uh, hi, Dave and John, and uh, thanks for all that you do. I would call myself a financial peace zealot, and I have kind of a strange car question for you. All right. So I have, uh, I guess we have the need to buy a new car in the next year or so. And uh, the cars that we're looking at are the two models. And quite frankly, they didn't exist a couple of years ago. So I was wondering, is it better to buy a 2019 used model or a 2020 uh, model that's 25K? So the used one's 30K and the new one's 25K, but they would both meet our needs. What's your household income? Uh, about 200K. That's nice. Very well. Good. Okay. <laughs> you talking about a Tesla? Oh, no, not a Tesla. They are hybrids, though. <laughs> oh, hybrids. Okay. All right. You said it didn't exist a few years ago, so I couldn't figure out what you're talking about. But the, uh, all right. So, uh, and what's your net worth, sir? Uh, sure. It's uh, probably about 700K. Okay. All right. Uh, our recommendation has always been not to buy a brand new vehicle until your net worth is over a million. You're going to be there very shortly with your income. And with, I assume that 700 is invested and it's growing as well. So you're going to be there before you know it. I personally did not buy any new cars after going broke and starting over and adopting these rules. I personally did not buy any new cars until I had a $10 million net worth. But, uh, but the point being that a new car goes down in value so fast that you want the discipline of not having invested in something that's losing ground that fast. You're kind of on the bubble. You make a lot of money. 
and you got a lot of money. You're almost there. So, I mean, you could cheat and pull it off. It's not going to destroy you. Uh, what I'm trying to do is keep somebody from making $50,000 a year uh, with a $20,000 net worth from buying a brand new car, and then they lose $8,000 the first 10 seconds they own the stupid thing. You know, when you drive it off the curve, curb, when it's brand new, it goes blump, blump. That was a 10 grand sound, <laughs> you know? And so that's, that's what you don't want to have a $10,000 thing happen to you when you don't have any money. Right. But in your case, with the money, with the numbers you're giving me, Dan, if they're all accurate, I mean, you're almost there, and so you, you're more than capable of making this decision on your own. I personally would probably go ahead and buy the used one just as an act of discipline, mm. of financial discipline, just to say I'm not going to start acting like I'm high on the hog because you're not that high on the hog yet. You're doing really well, though. Mm. You're doing really well. Obviously, you're, you got a huge income, and that's piling up for you fast. So, you know. It's not going to cause you to not make millionaire status, regardless of which way you make this decision. But I like the discipline of sticking with the guideline of until I have at least a million dollar net worth, I'm not going to buy a brand new car because they go down in value so quickly that first year. And Dave, one of my favorite things to do is to look at successful people, look at wise people and listen to their little T truths, the the sayings they give, but watch their big T truths, how they live. And for everybody listening to this who doesn't have $700,000 net worth and a $200,000 income, I want them to hear what it sounds like with somebody with that sort of resources, that sort of income earning power, still trying to make a wise decision on a yeah. car, still thinking yeah. about the purchase. That's how you get $700,000 when you ask questions about $25,000 purchases. Yep. That's how you accumulate that money, 10 bucks at a time, 10 bucks at a time. Exactly. Good for you, Dan. Exactly. He has the, he's got the right stuff. That's how, he's, that's how he got there. That's a good point, John. Very good. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. things that makes the Dave Ramsey show unique from other shows is that we genuinely care about our listeners. That's why we are very intentional about choosing our advertisers. Blinds.com offers high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices. And then their customer service is truly unbeatable. They make it simple to shop for blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping right to your door. And Blinds.com will help you every step of the way, just like they've helped thousands of my listeners with free design help by phone and online. Plus, they guarantee the perfect fit. Go today and take advantage of this week's special offer. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is the Dave Ramsey Show on the debt-free stage right here in Ramsey Solutions Lobby. Raphael and Jessica are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? How you doing, Dave? How are you? Welcome. How you doing, John? What's up, brother? Where do y'all live? <laughs> so We good. live in San Antonio, Texas. Awesome. How much debt have you paid off? $76,000. Woo! How long did yeah. this take? 17 months. Wow, you kicked it. And your range of income during that time? From 60000 to one hundred four. 
Now there's a bump. We went to school. She got a job. <laughs> and uh, look at you yeah. throwing her under the bus. <laughs> Come she on. Got a job. She got a job because I'm a disabled veteran. So uh, she was usually just at home just taking care of me. And then like I was like, hey, you gotta get out there. Start making some money for us so we can pursue pursue what we what we really want to do in life. You know? I love it. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Man. So what kind of debt was the seventy six thousand? Oh, it was a lot, man. I bought a car. Well, I had a, I originally bought a truck without telling her. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, I didn't listen. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I bought a truck without telling yeah, her. Jessica, how, how do you live through that? I don't know. He's still here. <laughs> the doctors You're are amazing, here. huh? I'm You're just here. a sweet lady. <laughs> the That's doctors all it are is. amazing. <laughs> I'm still here. So yeah, I did that, and then um, we thought we needed a family car because we had our second child at the moment. Um, so we bought a new 2018 Dodge Journey. Sure. Um, traded in the truck for that, so it was like negative equity into the new one. We paid forty thousand dollars for a twenty-seven thousand dollar car. Mm. Um, that went. We were un. We um. What do I say that? Underwater. We went, yeah, we were underwater. We went upside down in that within like six months. Wow. Um. So yeah. Um. In the last five years, I got scammed. Uh, we blew twenty-seven thousand dollars in a furniture store. Uh, in like two minutes. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Just blew. laughs> like just you're on a game show. <laughs> it was awesome, Dave. Uh, we did that, and then like we just got sick and tired. We had our second child, and then like we we was making all this money. It was like sixty grand at the time. We had nothing to show for it. Um, so I got mad. I was like, um, I started calling like some of our our companies and say, Hey, can we like postpone these bills? Uh-oh. Can we do it like three months out? Because we just bought a house at that moment too. Um, so it just felt like every time the money came in, it went out, um, on the second day of the month. So like we were just eating ramen noodles at the time, just, yeah. to, just to make it by trying to make ends meet. Yeah. Yeah. It sucked. I hated it. I didn't like it. You're eating ramen noodles at a really fancy kitchen table. Huh? <laughs> it was nice. It was oh. a really nice table. It was glass. All that. You pull it out. It rotated in the middle and everything. It was nice. And those yeah. ramen noodles tasted just the same, right? <laughs> it was. It was really good. We had the shrimp flavor, the chicken. <laughs> Man. All the different was, powder packs. All of them. Like, it was nice. It so was nice. So what did you do when you got disgusted? Uh, we had a talk. Um, we originally uh, went to Financial Peace uh, in California. Uh, that's where I was stationed, Camp mm-hmm. Milton. So um, we originally had it there, but we were still doing Dave-ish. We didn't have an accountability partner or anything So like you that. flunked? We flunked the class, yeah. Okay. We never even got the certificate, so it was, okay. it was sad. We All left, right. we moved to San Antonio, and then we met, these great, we met this great church called CBC. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met friends there, started a small group, and then mm-hmm. they... They seen a book in our house, like, hey, what are you doing with the Dave Ramsey book, man? Can I borrow it? And then they got serious about it. That that became our financial um, accountability partner. Um, and then we just started in January of last year, and we've just been booking it. Okay, so you knew what then. to do. You just had to go back to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we okay. knew what to do. And we Good. needed an accountability partner. Otherwise, yeah. we would just still spend whatever yeah. we want to. Keep you out of the furniture store. Mm. <laughs> 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 Stay yeah. away! Stay from the furniture. <laughs> yeah. That's hey, nice furniture, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jessica, we haven't heard from you. Tell us about your, your experience in this journey. It was really rough. Um, for a good while, I just kind of had to sit him down and talk to him and tell him that I felt like he was dragging me. Uh. Um, but we, we came together, and like he said, our accountability group just kind of helped us through the through the whole process and now we're here so you you didn't mind the your financial situation you liked that furniture i did you liked that new car i did at the time okay but it was like he said it was just ramen noodles mm. Mm. so oh money yeah. yeah oh money yeah mm. wow way to go now that you did it you're the other side of it talk to somebody who has taken the class years ago and fallen off the wagon so to speak and um what does it feel like to get back on it and go, okay, now game on? Well, it's excited um, after seeing the first debt go away, doing the steps, uh, do the smallest first and then do the largest. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just motivating, just checking it off the list on the, on the refrigerator. Um, I would say to them, just, just don't give up. Um, stop eating out because mm-hmm. uh, you, you might eat out small, but like those little purchases add up throughout the mountain. We, we noticed that we were spending like, nearly $800 on like food, just yep. eating out and stuff like that. Yep. So we stopped eating out, um, had the accountability partner and we just, we just stayed focused. Like we knew what we wanted for our kids. Mm. Um, that was our why mm-hmm. yeah, we didn't want them to, uh, relive 
Mm. We live um, a family curse of just being broke all the time. Mm. Mm. I didn't like it. So yeah. I want to set them up for financial financial peace. That's why we did it. We had a really strong why. Mm. And you did. Mm -hmm. You did. You you broke the chain, didn't you? You are uh, you literally changed your family tree. That's pretty cool, man. I'm so proud of you. And bigger than the money. Very well done. You taught those two kids what a married couple can accomplish when they come together. You taught a you taught your kids what it looks like to submit to accountability partners. You changed everything about their future, brother. Yeah. Because they were watching you the whole time. The whole time. They absorbed all of it. They absorbed all of Mama's temper tantrums. <laughs> it was a lot. It all of lot. it. Yeah. She was upset with me. We had to, um, we had a lot of fights along the way. Mm -hmm. But it was worth it. She was like, you're all about the money. I'm like, no, no. Because <laughs> every, every time we got paid, it was like, hey, let's throw it here. Let's throw it there. Let's get rid of this one. Let's get rid mm -hmm. of that one. Because I, I was just motivated by just seeing that big pile of debt mm -hmm. just disappear mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. month. Man, I'm so excited. proud of you guys. Well hmm. done. Very, exciting. very well done. So what are the secrets to getting out of debt? You got a big why, and that's that's obvious. What are the secrets? Sell. You, sell a bunch of stuff. Sell everything aside. <laughs> sell everything. We sold the entertainment system. We sold the car. The couch. We sold the couch. We don't even have a couch anymore. That's crazy. We sold uh, that dining room table. Everything we bought with the that. The glass thing. dining room the table. The glass dining room table. With the spinny thing in the middle. <laughs> He sold it. <laughs> sold it. Sold it all. So like, I love it. We sold clothes. We sold shoes. You know, when there's something that switch that flips, and you go, uh, it's just stuff. It's just stuff. Like, day we were selling plasma. I want. It was I, crazy. I, I want. <laughs> we were selling plasma. We were selling. Body I want parts. my family tree changed more than I want a mm. glass table with a spinny thing in the middle. Hey, it was worth it. I mean, that's like the opposite of shallow, right? It is. Well done. I don't want to live inside of one of the greatest culinary cities on earth eating ramen noodles, right? <laughs> oh, man. No, you don't. No, I you want don't to get some good that. food in San yeah. Antonio. Yeah. Hey, man. My mouth water. is watering. So Minus you did that. Two. You did that. <laughs> Oof, man. All right. We got a copy of Chris Hogan's book for you, Everyday Millionaires. That's definitely the next chapter in your story. We're going to get the kiddos into the debt-free scream? Let's do it. All right. What are their names and ages? This is Rafael Jr. and Leonardo. I'm trying All to stick right. with Ninja Turtles. There right you here. go. I need two more. There you go. Two more. All right. Lots of Ninja Turtle action. Here. All right. Seventy-six thousand dollars paid off in seventeen months, making sixty to one hundred and four. But the most important thing was, the family curse has changed. The family tree has changed, and you're looking in the guy's face, the gal's face, who changed it right here. They did it. Mm. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Give honor to where you came from, but you don't have to repeat where exactly you came right. from. That's the magic, right? You don't have to repeat the things that they did that were wrong. You can change your family tree. You can honor people and recognize There's not a curse that can't be broken. They didn't have the tools. I've got them. A the curse can be broken with the truth. Yes. And the action. And when you put the truth and the action in place, you can change it. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. 2020 probably wasn't the year you hoped for. Well, no, duh. You might have to pause some of your money goals, like paying off debt just to keep your house running. But a new year is here. 
and you can clean up the debt, and you can get control of your money, and you can get back on track, if you got off track, faster than you think. And that's exactly what happens when you get Ramsey Plus. It's our step-by-step -step money plan that will help you pay off your debt as fast as possible so you can start spending and saving how you want. And here's how. You learn the practical ways to pay off more debt and save for emergencies. You'll plan your spending in a budget so you can even find more money to throw at the debt. And you'll track your progress. We're going to show you everything. It's Financial Peace University wrapped into their Ramsey Plus. No matter how this year has gone, you can make 2021 the year you get rid of your debt for good. So try Ramsey Plus for free. If you want to try it, text the word TRIAL to 33789. That's TRIAL to 33789. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today here on the air. Rodrigo is in San Francisco. Hey, Rodrigo, how are you? Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? I need help or some guidance of how to tackle $71,278 of debt. Um, it's seven credit cards totaling $35,875. One personal loan totaling $11,611. One car loan totaling $11,626. A student loan of uh, $6,808. And a tax bill of $5,357. And uh, what's overwhelming for me is that the minimum payments on all this stuff totals to uh, 1846 And I'm just not sure the best way to tackle this whole debt. And what's your income? Um, income is uh, 39000 well, How much is your rent? Um, rent, I'm fortunate right now to be staying at a place where it's 500 bucks at the moment, which is amazing. What's at the moment mean? You're not going to be there long? Um, or? I'm going to be here for at least a, a year and a half. Okay. Because that's unheard of in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You said very fortunate. It's more like a miracle. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's wonderful. I'm happy for you. Okay. So you live in one of the more expensive cities in the world. You know that. Yeah. Making $39,000. How old are you? Uh, 31. Single. Okay. And so for approximately eight to 10 years, you've been spending more than you make pretty steadily. Yes. Thus the personal loan, thus the credit card debt, the car purchase when you didn't have any money, so it's debt. And the student loan lingers yeah. from the days back in college. Yeah. Is, is this a summary of how we got here or did I read something wrong? Nope. Summary perfectly. Okay. And so... I think there's two things that have to happen, um, and they both have to happen in order for you to turn this math around, because the math is kicking your butt, and you got no wiggle yeah. room. There's no margin in the numbers you're giving me, and uh, you've kind of come to that, had that come to Jesus moment with the arithmetic, right? And so yeah. um, uh, uh, one, there's two sides. There's income and outgo, and we call it shovel-to-hole ratio. Your shovel is your income. The hole is your is your seventy one thousand dollars in debt eighteen hundred bucks a month that's the whole and so you have a a medium to small shovel especially given the city that you live in and if you were in abilene texas it'd be different okay but uh in, in the city that you're in that's tough and thirty nine thousand is tough and, and uh then the hole you're in is substantial. So you have a medium to small shovel and a large hole. So we need to change that ratio. We got to do something with your income. What do you do for a living, man? Right now I'm um, working at a housekeeper in a hospital. Okay. All right. So you need a side gig that pays. And it can be something as simple as delivering pizza, and you can make an extra 1500 a month doing that. That's 18000 a year. We just added 50% to your income, and you're working four or five nights a week. Your party days are over. you got to get an extra yeah. job or three. And because 1500 bucks a month right now changes your whole life because you can begin to clean this mess up. 
Call the student loan people. Put it on a hardship deferral. Don't pay them a dime right now. Cut up your credit cards. And then the last step, in addition to adding extra income, is you have got to get on a detailed budget. Now, the good news is you really know exactly where you are. You are a detailed person. You did not give me vague innuendo about your debt. You gave me exactly what it was, which tells me positive things about you. So use that exacting part of your personality. Jump on. I'm going to put you. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to put you in Ramsey Plus for a year, and I want you to go to the Financial Peace University class. I want you to get on every dollar. This syncs up with your bank. It's the best budgeting app in the world, and I'm going to give it to you all free because I've been right where you are and scared, and you're scared. Yeah. Thanks. And Rodrigo, I want to toss one more thing into the mix. Do you have somebody there in town that you trust that you can be open with? Yeah, I do. Okay. You need to have a hard, hard conversation about living in one of the most expensive places on earth, being 31 and broke. Broke. You may have to make some new geographic decisions, some change of profession decisions. And this is one of those moments that out of the ash of this fire, you're going to make some meaning and you're going to, you're going to launch out and be a totally new Rodrigo in 2021. But somebody, you're going to have to sit down and have a hard conversation about why am I living here? Why am I committed to doing this work at 31? Is this what I'm going to be doing at 41? Am I going to be doing this at 51? Or am I going to really bite the bullet for 18 months, 24 months and change the entire trajectory of my life? Yeah. So I, you hold on the line, Kelly will pick up and we'll get you signed up for Ramsey plus. I'm not sure this is right, but I'll tell you what I think I'm hearing. Hmm. No one wins the Super Bowl by accident. It is a series of intentional acts. And so far the first decade of your adulthood, everything has happened to you. You have not happened to it. You've kind of gone. Eh, I'll take this job. Eh, I'll live there. Eh, I'm going to buy that car. Eh, let's go out tonight. Eh. And all those, eh, so I'll add it up to a pile of crap. And so you now you're ready because you called us and you knew what you were walking into. You're ready to turn the corner and start going, uh, this is not happening to me anymore. I'm going to make decisions now. Intentional. Be intentional about my career. Discipline. I'm going to be intentional and disciplined about this. And the good news is you're a very detailed person, and you will lay out a and map out a detailed strategy, and then you can execute it. But you don't accidentally end up in, in you know, if you leave home and you want to leave San Francisco and you want to go to Seattle, you don't accidentally end up there. Nope. On a Sunday afternoon drive, you have a freaking map. And you go, turn here, turn here, fill up with gas, stop and go to the bathroom, turn here, drive here. And the GPS will yell at you, turn around if you're going the wrong way. And you've got to get on a GPS for your life and, and start being very intentional about every step. Because I kind of think, I might be wrong, but I'm kind of reading between the lines that this has all just been path of least resistance. Mm. Oh, that job's there. Earl Nightingale used to say one of the fathers of motivational speaking that in every decade there's a group of people who spend more time picking out a suit of clothes than their career Ooh. and that's just normal we get sidetracked and we put our attention to the wrong things <laughs> so that puts us hour of the dave ramsey show in the books thanks john good work thank you so much dr john deloney James Childs in the booth is our producer. Kelly Daniel is our associate producer and phone screener. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.